What's up, everybody? MagicRacingNews.com here to watch a race that uh, I'm getting little butterflies about. It's the Grade 2 Jim Dandy Stakes. Only four horses, but you really couldn't ask for a much better group of four horses here than what we have. Right there on the screen is your Preakness Stakes Champion early voting. Nine to five second choice despite beating your even money favorite right now, the number two epicenter, last time out in the Preakness Stakes. So we get a rematch between these two. Uh, Joel Rosario and Epicenter now drawn inside of early voting instead of way outside. See what kind of ride Joel gives, because if you remember, Steve Asmussen, not happy with the ride Joel Rosario gave in the Preakness. Early voting is going in with the gate open. That's interesting. Uh, right before we started recording, he was acting up a little bit, and he's doing it again there. Now you see Flava and Pratt on the five-horse Zandon, your grade one bluegrass takes one a third, a very, very respectable third to Epicenter in the Kentucky Derby, who was second, of course. Uh, Epicenter done really nothing wrong other than just sometimes can't get the win, whereas early voting, a neck away from being perfect in four starts is one loss to the Belmont Stakes. But here we go. We're off. Great. <sighs> Epicenter, not the best break there. Tawny Port outbroke him. <laughs> is he going to, Joel's going to let Epicenter be last into the turn. So here's the problem with this. It was already shaping up pace-wise to benefit early voting. Epicenter was going to try and press him. Epicenter broke a step slow. Like we saw in the Preakness, Rosario doesn't push him to go. We'll see what happens here. Uh, already not. <laughs> if you're an Epicenter fan in the, in, a, in the better, not the best start to the race. If you're a fan of early voting... He is exactly where I'm going to be. Look at those fractions. 24 and 1. He is comfortable as all get out. Well, I, you know, I don't know. What's he said? That was a little bit on there. We'll keep watching what happens. Uh, Zandon, uh, you know, a horse that has tactical speed, though, does seem to do better coming from off the pace, chasing more pace than what he's facing here. Also, another Chad Brown trainee, though, very different owner. So, wouldn't expect any collusion here. Flavian Pratt also wants to win. Uh, as much as he can at Saratoga. So here we go into the far turn, 48 and one. So pretty much 24 flat uh, for the second uh, quarter there. Rosario still, now he's going to, it seems like now he's moving. He's asking Epicenter for something. Jose Ortiz is, is all out on, on early voting at the quarter poll. Rosario's tipping out here to go three wide. We'll see what kind of a kick Epicenter has, because if this is going to be uh, like the LeCompte, Early voting's done in Epicenter. Holy smokes. Come on, Epicenter. This is my derby baby. This was my derby pick. This was my Preakness pick. This was my everything pick. Finally gets it done. I really thought it was going to be the Traverse Stakes when he got it done. Man, that was so good. Oh, that felt good. A little bit of redemption for... <sighs> he should have... He should have won the Kentucky Derby. I'm still mad about that. Hey... First things first, last final time, 149. Uh, Joel Rosario, the horse didn't break. I said it, the horse didn't break well. Um, he sat <laughs> last, and it was. It seemed a little odd. Rosario, look at that. That looks how he rode him in fairgrounds when he was on the Kentucky Derby Trail. Rosario, just very confident there, very confident. How many times does he actually get after him with the whip? Because I didn't see it come out once. I don't think that – you see it right there is in his hand – along the right shoulder of Epicenter. I don't think he touched him with the whip. Been saying all year, this is the best three-year-old uh, dirt router uh, on my, my pick for the Breeders' Cup Classic. <sighs> Where was this in the Derby? Where was this in the Preakness? This was great. Uh, amazing ride. And here's what's great. Uh, Asmussen, even on the Saratoga Slim backside vlog, which if you're not watching that, you need to, because Slim's going backside and interviewing all these top trainers. Um, all three trainers that had horses here, Brad Cox included, uh, Saratoga Slim got to uh, got to interview them. So here's the thing. Asmussen made it seem like Epicenter wasn't going to be fully cranked for this because people were reading into a lot. They said, oh, it's the, it, Asmussen said the Travis is the goal. Well, duh. Show me and my <laughs> counter argument to why Epicenter wouldn't win is or wouldn't be like able to be, give his best effort is show me one time in his career when he hasn't done that. You can't. Maybe his debut, you can be forgiving of a horse debuting at age two. Epicenter, my gosh, I love this horse so much. What a stud. Son of not this time. Now, here's the thing. Still doesn't have a grade one win. Uh, Zandon, grade one bluegrass winner. Early voting, grade one Preakness winner. Early voting did look a little off in the post parade. I mentioned that, you know, he was um, 
he was a little off uh, right as they were near the gate. They had opened the gate for him to go in. And then you see there from the three quarter to the mile, they went 24 and blah, blah, 24 and one and uh, and then 12 and two to come home. So uh, epicenter not being asked for his best looked incredible, looked amazing. This horse is, is very much built for a mile and a quarter. Um, it's just gonna be interesting to see what happens in Travis. We get more of a player. So uh, epicenter gets the job done despite not being fully cranked. Uh, He's still the even money favorite. Steve Asmussen, back-to-back -back wins. If you missed it, the Vanderbilt handicap was race eight just before this. Uh, Joel Rosario, Steve Asmussen, Jackie's Warrior. They won that much shorter price, one to five. But you can check out the replay and the reaction to that. Aaron Haltman is live at Saratoga with Mike Samich. And Aaron jumped in to talk about Jackie's Warrior and, and what he thought about it and got to show us Jackie's Warrior getting a standing ovation from the crowd because he's now five for five in his lifetime at Saratoga over the course of three summers. Uh, that's, that's great. But, oh man, epicenter, uh, wasn't the freshest in the Preakness early voting was very fresh early vote. They had the same level of, uh, they've been both been off since the Preakness epicenter, the best horse proves it once again. What do you think? That's my opinion, but I'd love to hear from you. Tell me down below in the comments section. What did you think about this boy right here? Yeah, make sure you get it right. Uh, epicenter getting the job done. Uh, just absolutely love this horse. So great, so great to see. Traverse Stakes is shaping up to be an absolute banger because you know Zandon's coming back. He didn't run poorly. He just probably needed a lot more pace. Uh, we could see Tawny Port go because he was right there early voting. Eh, well, I think we, my concern with him was that he wasn't good beyond the mile in the ninth anyway. I think we might have seen a little bit of that show up here, but we'll see what Chad Brown says because, again, he was acting off leading up to the race. So we'll see what happens. Uh, and also, don't forget, we've got the Haskell winner, Ty, uh, Ty, uh, sorry, not the winner either. Cyberknife. The has winner Cyberknife for trainer Brad Cox. Uh, he should put Tony Porter in to see how that horse would match up. And I think send him to the Traverse. Why not? I think it's going to shaping up to be a big field. You've got to see how he's going to match up against that group at some point. So maybe he goes. Um, you have Tava, who was a very close second to Cyberknife in the Haskell at Monmouth Park last weekend. How about yesterday, the Curlin Stakes winner for who? Trainer Chad Brown, Artorias, uh, wins Friday. Make sure you check out that replay over at racingdudes.com, youtube.com slash racingdudes, because that might be, that's actually looking like Chad Brown's best horse for the Travers, and that's weird to say, but go watch the replay in our reaction. You'll see what I mean about that. Uh, give me a thumbs up on the video if you like this. Really appreciate it. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, youtube.com slash racingdudes. Also, don't forget, every Wednesday through Sunday at noon Eastern, we're doing Dudes Who Bet daily with, uh, it, it's a mix of the Racing Dudes team every morning or every morning for me, every day at noon, but giving our single best bets of the day. And it's not, we have a certain limit. We're not going to give you, you know, Jackie's Warrior 1 to 5 was everybody's best bet, I'm sure. But we're not going to do this. We actually give out prices like that, especially Jared Welch has been red hot, 5-1 and one with his top pick so far. So tune in for Jared Welch's best bet, if nothing else. Subscribe to the channel. Hit like before you leave. See you at the track. <laughs>